Yo, and welcome to another episode of I Love Youth Work. And today is another special yes, yes. episode. Dave, are you there? Hmm? I am here, and we have the pleasure of being with the lovely, glamorous, the magnificent, <laughs> wonderful, the beautiful, incredible, inspirational, gorgeous. <laughs> Oh my God! We 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 have run out of superlatives <laughs> for the one and only I'd Charlotte say. Hill. That's Hello, right. That's thank right. You. No, it's a pleasure to have you here. Pleasure to have you here, dude. I think before we kind of kick off and start asking the questions, well, I'm going to do my little simple introduction uh, of who um, Charlotte Hill is. So, for those of you who don't know, Charlotte is the um, current CEO of uh, of UK Youth. And she comes from a fantastic background. She used to be the, um, the parliamentary assistant and then advisor to the Right Honourable Harriet Harman, QC, MP, Hooray! OB, no, I don't know, and all the rest. Okay. <laughs> and then she worked as a parliamentary advisor um, uh, for the NSPCC, which is my favourite charity, even though they won't return my calls for my three speeches. Uh, we'll get to that another time. And um, oh, yeah, why, why are they call me back? Come on, NSPCC, sort it out. And she is currently um, trailblazing and kicking butt, moving boundaries, working, revolutionising the whole marketplace with UK youth. And today we're going to speak to her to see what lies beneath all this fire and passion, this bike riding enthusiast, <laughs> CEO of UK youth. So fantastic to have you here, Charlotte, and we are looking forward to um, talking to you today. Thank you. Okay. So now we've so, got all the compliments. Mr. Bob, that I know you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was going to say, now yeah, that yeah, we've yeah, got, yeah, yeah. got, the, to that we got <laughs> the compliments out of the way, now we're going to go to hardcore Jeremy Pexman. We found That's some right. dirt on you. <laughs> we've got those pictures from Facebook. And, uh, you know, we hear that you're responsible. All three of them. And we hear that you're responsible for the privatization of youth work in this country so we're going to be uh, we're coming for you. Yeah. We're coming for you i'm ready i'm ready so you know okay. we're good. We're they've good. said we're like good. let's you know let's ease her in with all the compliments and all that stuff and then we'll come to the serious question it's a nice, it's a nice start but let's make okay it, i'm ready i'm ready let's, have, let's start with an easy question if people don't know what uk youth is can you give us a brief introduction of what uk youth does I certainly can. I'll try and keep it brief. So, UK Youth, we've been around for 102 years. Always, right from back in 1911, has been around um, inclusion. So, making sure all young people can be included in learning. And that's outside the classroom. So, it's the non-formal learning, non-formal education sector, youth work, whatever you want to call it. It's basically drawing learning out of stuff that young people do outside the classroom. And we do that in all sorts of different settings. Traditionally, it's through a, uh, a network of associations. So um, London Youth being an example, um, Kent Youth, uh, Warwickshire Association of Youth Clubs, they support a network of youth clubs. We basically develop like innovative new youth work programmes that roll out through that network. That's a kind of traditional model. We've moved on from that a lot. We still do a lot of work with that network, but now we develop lots of other projects and programmes and training and accreditation and all sorts of other things that are basically out there for 11 to 25 year olds and people working with 11 to 25 year olds okay. in a nutshell. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. In a cocoa nutshell. <laughs> yeah. In a very, you know, there's, there's lots of other stuff we do as well. We run a big outdoor activity center, do all sorts of other things. But in a nutshell, that's the kind of ethos behind all the programs that we run. It's about young people um, taking responsibility for themselves. It's about young people building on the skills they have, whether that's communication skills, team building, resilience, all of those things. Um, and it's a, a very strong ethos in all the work we do is around being youth led. So young people really making the decisions about what they want to do, where they want to go, and also it being very much a peer education model. So it's young people teaching other young people. Okay, great. Okay. So there you go. I remember a couple of months ago, Dave and I was in your office and we was talking about that it's an important time in the youth work field, if you like a season that we're going through. And for some people that's causing a lot of concern, uh, people are anxious, uh, for others are finding different opportunities, but it's definitely a time of change. Um, how, what is UK Youth doing in this time of change? Uh, I know that UK Youth is working with uh, some international businesses or global businesses to kind of look at new funding streams or new yeah. ideas. But, you know, what, would, what, what in summary is, is UK Youth doing in this time of change? It's interesting talking about a time of change, how many people today have been getting in touch, actually, because of our ministers changed. Um, so with the reshuffle yesterday, I think, again, people are having a big think, you know, 
regardless of whether people agree with the coalition government or not, or thought Tim Lawton was great or not, actually he was a really strong ambassador for quite a lot of the work we did. At least I always felt I knew we had a voice in that department speaking up for quite a lot of what we did. So I think it will be really interesting to see what happens now he's moved yesterday. But anyway, broadly across the sector, it is a massive time of change. And I really loved it. I loved the analogy when we last met you gave of it being like going through the seasons. I think that's so true. And I think there's lots of people in youth work who have actually probably seen us go through this cycle yep. a few times, the kind of seasons of, you know, when there's funding, when there isn't, when it, youth work or whatever is in vogue and is the popular thing. I definitely think it's, it's, it's no different from lots of challenges we've seen before, which is we've always had to be quite innovative about how our work is funded. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think that's anything particularly new. I think people have always got to be looking at who can we partner with to do our work, who, not just around funding. And I think that's the thing that we've been really trying to do with some of these things you've been talking about with, with, with companies particularly. We don't necessarily go to companies and say, we need some money. We basically go to companies and say, right, this is what we do. This is why it's really beneficial for your company. And that's whether it's around, you know, this is your workforce of the future. These are the young people who are going to come and work for you. These are the skills we know you want them to walk in and have. And actually, that's what good youth work gives them. Or if it's around us saying, and we know what you're good at, and you've got a load of skills that we don't necessarily have, how can we work together so that we kind of can benefit from the skills of your workforce and you can benefit from the work we do. And it's about bringing together a partnership, I think. And I, again, I don't think that's anything particularly new. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably just had a bit of a spotlight shone on it with the whole big society, you know, push from the government. Dave, you got any comments on that? It's, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I, I didn't uh, last. Well, yesterday I was out um, doing some uh, workshops and then eating some lovely Italian in the evening. Um, but I didn't realize uh, even when I was on the way home and I was reading all the changes that Tim Lawton had actually moved, who was a real yeah. strong ambassador. So it's quite interesting. As you say, you've done a, you've done a lot of uh, work working with those external, external organizations. But, uh, you know, how are we feeling that, you know, this massive champion that we had in Parliament who really had the had the back, you know, a lot of people who I know who had met Tim Lau were really, um, you know, complimentary of what he'd done for in the youth space. You know, how are we going to cope? Well, not how are we going to cope, but what are, what's the kind of outlook now that he's gone and somebody else has got, you know, come in to replace him? How Let's you see. I think, well, interestingly, they never do a kind of a straight swap with ministers anyway. So as the new kind of team come in, as I understand it, they'll sit down over the coming week or so and between them have a look at how they're going to divide up the education brief amongst them. So it may be yeah. that actually the kind of direct brief that Tim had is going to be divided amongst people. I've got to say I'm, I've been increasingly nervous about the direction of travel for the department since it changed its name from Children's Schools and Families to Department for Education. Because mm. actually yeah. Children's Schools and Families described perfectly what it did. It really mm. was about more than just that kind of time that kids sit in a classroom. It's about all of the other stuff that goes around young people's learning. Um, and the increasing shift we've seen within the department of, you know, a massive decrease in a focus around the youth work, the youth sector, a huge increase in, you know, all of the officials and everyone else working around the free schools and the academy's agenda. I'm, I'm nervous because actually I think we've got to have a voice in, in Westminster. I, I don't necessarily think it's about funding particularly. I think it's about though, us making sure we have got a voice in Westminster, speaking up for the really important work that is happening in our sector. And so I just really hope, and I think Tim did that really well. I think he was in an incredibly difficult position, bearing in mind all the cuts he's had to oversee as a minister. You know, it could have been that every single youth sector event he went to, he would be booed at. And actually, I think it was a real testament to him and the amount of hours he put in and all of the face to face time he put in with people going around. But that, um, that, that didn't happen, that people actually did see he was trying to be an advocate in in the, the department. So let's see. I don't know. It's a bit too soon to tell. I don't want to damn them before they've even started because it might be that actually someone else comes in and does a fantastic job well i don't we'll know see. maybe we can we can damn them before they come in i mean i'm i'm not a big fan yeah. of what <laughs> <laughs> i'm holding my holding Bob my tongue doesn't care. i'm holding my tongue here i mean i'm not <laughs> I, I, I make go it. on say it. yeah what, what do you think bob well I'm, I'm not a big fan of what the coalition has done and, and the agenda that's been set um and maybe there might be a, a another agenda that has gone over my head but i i think that the shift 
uh, from children's schools and families to education has just be, has been more than just a shift in name. Um, I think that um, that uh, maybe accidentally or maybe purposefully that youth work has been devalued um, and hasn't been um, uh, prioritized in a time of, of recession. Um, but, and I don't mean I don't mean that just by funding. But you know the thing that's. I think the thing that's really weird about it is I don't think the Tories or the coalition have really got the idea that a lot of the stuff they're saying around the big society about national citizen service or whatever, actually, it's youth work. But for some reason, they don't want to invest in youth work. They kind of have shifted it out of education and they put it over in the cabinet office and they've tried to kind of keep it as this thing around communities and civil society. And, and actually, it's not. It's, it's good basic youth work is what's going to make those programmes really work. I, I think for sure. I suppose, I think, I suppose I think, it's a good thing, though. Is, hold on, let me finish my sorry, point. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. My God, no. blimey. Go on, let me get these guys going. <laughs> get these going. How'd you put the mute on? How'd you put the mute on? Uh, no, my point is that there's, <laughs> there's been opportunities for us to be able to sing the praises of what youth work has done, what it's doing, and what it can do. And I think that the, the government has been a bit uh, lazy in, um, in jumping at those opportunities. Um, the civil dis disturbances of, of last year, riots or whatever we want to call it, was a perfect opportunity for us to say, you know what, this is going to be much worse if we didn't have a really robust youth service. We need a much, you know, more quality. We need to big up the youth workers. But instead, it became a kind of feast in saying, oh, we've wasted lots of money yeah. and we've got too much Indian dancing. Don't get me on the Indian dancing. Don't get me on the Indian dancing. But you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, you know, there's not, you know, we've got waves and we've got all this stuff. And I thought, I thought it was, yeah. I thought it was a disgrace, to be honest, that we didn't take that opportunity. Yes, there's been, uh, you know, seeds of hope. But you know what? My expectation for what the government can do and what people in, in the public eye can do are probably so high that in this time of, of, of massive change, you know, we need to be able to sing the praises and also see what the opportunities are so people can feel heard. I've got youth workers every day, even yesterday uh, on Twitter saying to me, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're sending out positive um, affirmations, but, you know, I'm losing my job. Yeah. And, you know, we've got the government saying, you know, are youth workers lazy? Um, is it really cost for, you know, are we getting value for money? And I think, it, is that the right thing to be saying at a time when so much shift is happening? So maybe I'm, I'm a bit more um, philosophical about some of the changes. Cynical. Cynical. Yeah. Cynical. I, I, maybe I'm I personally think the localism agenda has made it really, really hard because ultimately what the government is saying is we're giving the money to local authorities. Local authorities make the decision about what they want to spend it on. The problem being the local authorities don't have enough money to do their statutory work, let alone everything that isn't a statutory requirement. And as we've got an ageing population, you know, the demands on social services, the demands on all of the stuff that local authorities have to deliver, unless we can make youth provision a statutory responsibility for every local authority to deliver, there's no way we're going to get we're going to get more and more and more squeezed by every single local authority because they simply haven't got enough money to deliver it. So I was really pleased. I think Labour made a pledge to say if they came in, they'd make it a statutory responsibility. I think that's what we've got to fight for, actually, that it shouldn't be that local authorities have a choice whether they fund it or not. It should be something that they have to have in their budget and they have to spend money on. True. I mean, yeah. I mean, this podcast yeah. turning very political. Um, <laughs> almost a homage know, to sorry. a homage to a thing, but you know that's how it runs. You know that, that that's cool. That is, yeah. that is one hundred percent cool. I think there's, there's opportunities, and and there is a role for government. And one of the best things, and we we talked about, is you know what's happened in in, uh, in the recession or the depression or however we want to term it, is that the role of government has become less in the sector, which is I think a welcoming thing because yeah. it became so dominant and such an influence um, that everyone was just creating um not everyone but the majority were creating projects that were designed to get the funding rather than to meet the needs of young people and and you know it kind of skewed what was going on and the less that the government has funding uh, and the less the government has the agenda the more that it can come into the needs of local young people which is what it should be um but you know my, my i want us to yeah. kind of go on I just think we've got to be careful. I don't know. I just think we've got to be careful around it in that. I do agree 
and actually it's been it's been quite liberating for UK youth in many ways. We've gone out and done things really differently, but we, we were doing that anyway, regardless of whether government funding was available or not. I, I guess the thing that makes me concerned is there are certain organisations who can go out there and, and find other funding and form other partnerships, and there's other organisations that are doing really, really good work but were really set up around grant funding and there's just going to be no way to replace that. So I think we're going to have to face the fact that there's some really decent work that was going on out there that was grant funded that, that is just going to disappear. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 do you um, think, do you think, um, go on, go on Bob, I'm, you're the boss. <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Well, let, let's I'm just stop there. Let's just stop yeah. there then. Uh, but what I'm saying is, uh, you know, I, I think we, uh, what I'm going to do is welcome the honesty. Because if there isn't going to be those services anymore, what are we going to do? And I think that mm -hmm. the honesty yeah. needs to come through that if we don't have enough money to fund that, then what are we going to do? I mean, we can complain about it, but if those services yeah. are not going to be there and they've been set up as grant funded and the grants are not there, what are we going to do? Because the young people are not interested in this conversation. The young people are saying, have you got a service for me? And yeah. if, if you haven't got a service for Absolutely. me, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to find or make a way to make money and get the, you know, to, to get the things that I want now. So, so, you know, that's, that's what I, my plea to the kind of industries, you know, we have to have the level of honesty and get, get busy. Dave. And also oh. Jen, sorry, Dave, go on. No, go, go, go on, shut up. It's your interview. Go ahead. I gonna, I'll come well, up. Well, I was just going to say, I think the thing that's really important is when there is, there is opportunity around partnerships and funding and developing new programmes, the other thing that's really important is that funders really blooming listen to what's needed, because I think that's a real challenge. People have to understand that properly having youth-led work is, is, is more challenging than just having a load of people sitting around a meeting room saying, I think this is a good idea, let's do this. Um, but you've got to properly invest in that and properly invest in finding out what, what it is young people want and what it is young people need and not just duplicating. There's all sorts of people who come to us saying, you know, our CEOs had an idea. We, we, we want to do a program around this. We want to do this. And I'm thinking there's loads of stuff out there doing exactly that already. Whereas there's big gaps in other spaces where young people really do need some, wow. some support or some help. So I think it's also around uh, us having the responsibility as a sector to work together better to make sure we're not all just working in one really crowded space and and like you said not just following the funding one of the challenges is the bits of funding that are going to be available are going to be for very targeted specific groups of young people and we've all got a responsibility i think to make sure we're doing programs that actually meet the needs of everybody not just right here's a bit of funding available for this so that's the work we're going to do mm -hmm. okay it's, it's, it's a, a quick question that I was going to ask was just in, in the time that you have been in the role, what are the key kind of lessons that you have learned? I'm sure there are millions, but what are the key ones that you've learned? Never need to see my husband. Um, <laughs> no, that's a joke. Um, the, I guess um, key lessons I've personally learned or the organisation. Well, you as a CEO. I'd not been a chief executive before. It was a big, it was a massive um leap of faith i think for our board so john bateman who'd been my predecessor had been with the organization for 37 years and i was this you know relatively young inexperienced young lady who hadn't been a chief executive hadn't led an organization let alone a relatively you know established long-term charity so i think i've learned a lot of things one is is that if you really support someone whether they're young or old or whatever actually anybody can do it it's about your skills and qualities and commitment and wanting to work hard rather than necessarily your experience. Um, I've also definitely learned relationships are probably the most important thing in in any work that you do. And, I, and that's not just internal relationships in running an organisation, but actually forming those new partnerships with all sorts of different people, never quite knowing where they're going to go. You know, I think the networking and the relationship building has been the thing I've learnt is the most important thing, probably in all of it. Um, what else have I learnt? I mean, I've learnt so much. I don't know where to start. Just also, the kind of funded. Go on. 
I was going to say, one of the things that I, in, in my, the few years that I've been in youth work, uh, has noticed is the amount, as you, I think you said before, the amount of replication. How have you, obviously you're leading this pivotal organization. How have you viewed the amount of replication that you have seen? And, you know, and how do you see UK youth addressing that so that a lot of organizations don't duplicate or don't replicate uh, where necessary? We, I, I think there's two things that have, I've found really important. One is I have a, the most amazing and brilliant director of youth work, Pauline Taylor, who's been with the organisation for 25 Pauline. years. And I'm, the, yeah, yeah, she's yeah. awesome. Hey, um, I, I was really pleased, actually. Um, um, CYP Awards yesterday did their shortlist and she's been nominated as the Children and Young People's Champion, which I think couldn't be more yeah. fitting because she's exactly that. She's an awesome lady. Um, she is I, an absolute rock for me because she's been doing, you know, working in youth work, the youth work sector all of her life. She's seen everything go round and round and round, you know, do all sorts of cycles. She's seen all sorts of different organisations try all sorts of different things, following all sorts of money. Um, so she, for me, is, is a person who I immediately have a kind of a touchstone around saying, right, have we, have we done this before? Is this a cycle we've been through? Have you seen anyone else in the sector try this? Who, if you have, who's done it well? And who could we like partner up with rather than reinvent the wheel? And she's been a great person for making sure if we have got the opportunity to do something and, and we know someone else has either done it already or done it before, that we're not duplicating, that we're going out and talking to those people. And not necessarily just because we've got a pot of money and we can do it, think that we're the right people to. I think that's a thing. Um, it's about organisations kind of understanding what their USP is a bit better. And it's something we're really working on trying to be clearer around and be better around of saying, right, what is it we do really well? What is it that other people do really well? How can we bring together consortiums and coalitions that actually can do delivery the best they can, the most efficiently they can, producing the best service for young people that they can, um, and not just protecting money because that's what you do as an organisation. So can I throw in a controversial question before Bob comes yeah. back in then? Go on. How do you how do you take or how have you been able to deal with the 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 commentary from individuals who can't process that circo along with yourselves yeah. and the number of the other uh, I think uh, the inspired and a couple of others have yeah. got the the national leadership. How do you deal with the flack around circo? I I'm going to be honest. I can't stand circo. Yeah. I can't stand okay. them. All right. I, do you know look what? at my eyes, look, I can't, but, I know, but how do you I can do with see. it? Do you know what's quite frustrating is, because we're in the middle of a tendering cycle, I've been told I'm actually not allowed to talk about it. Oh, that's correct, so that's fine. We, okay. we basically, we'll find out hopefully at the end of this week, I think, if, if we're successful or not. And after that, I will have, I'll be absolutely liberated to talk to you because do you know what I'm itching to I find it so frustrating there's all this commentary around National Citizen Service and what we're doing and the consortium we brought together I cannot wait to be able to properly talk about it but because we're in a tendering cycle we're not we're not allowed to so so two things sorry that's not so two things we established that is not a cop out so two things we established there's going to be <laughs> yeah. a, there's going to be a part two to this interview because we're going to have to obviously... Yeah, hello. I'd love to. Hello. Yeah. That enthusiasm. Also, and, and Dave is asking questions that she can't answer, if... so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it really annoys me. I cannot I cannot tell you how much I can't wait to be able to. Please, can we, once once it's all the contracts have been negotiated, if we've been successful in any of the regions, I'd love to come mm. back and talk to you about it. No problem. You're more than welcome. But let's, let's focus on what you can Thank talk you. about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that, so there's, there, there's a couple of questions that have come through, and I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with those. But before we get to those, um, something that you can speak about is the United Futures project. Um, I think it's a yeah. partnership with various mm. private sector companies. Can you tell us what what's the aims of that of partnership? Of someone who doesn't know what that's about, what's United Futures? Okay. So United Futures is bringing together three partners. So UK Youth are bringing the kind of youth sector partnership. We've got business in the community who are bringing the business and then we've got National Children's Bureau, NCB, who are doing the help around the research and the audit set phase. They've got a great research unit set up there. So they're, they're the kind of experts in doing that. The whole premise behind it, what we wanted to do in bringing, bringing it together was exactly this thing of saying, actually at UK Youth, we've over the last few years done some absolutely brilliant work by partnering up with business. And it, it has been work that's been 
you know, it's expanded our ability as an organisation and our reach as an organisation and the things we're able to offer young people and the skills that we're able to access and all those sorts of things. It's been hugely positive for us. So what we wanted to be able to do is kind of act as a bit of a broker so that we can bring other businesses in and other youth sector organisations in and say, right, how can we kind of look at brokering relationships and breaking down some of the barriers that some people seem to have both in the business sector and the youth sector about working together. So it's really about giving people um, skills and opportunities and breaking down some barriers around forming partnerships across sectors. Okay, so one of the questions that we had uh, from Twitter, Charlotte, came from uh, Winston Good. Uh, good with the E. I follow Winston. And he, I follow him. Indeed, indeed. Winston is a good egg. And his question was, is, uh, I shall read it exactly from, from script, so I'm not summarising. He says, what are your views on police officers gaining youth work qualifications and will it put them more in tune with young people? Interesting question. I yeah. I know that we have been round this a million times variously when they talked about bringing in community support officers and all sorts of things. I know mm. a really strong lobby came from the youth work sector saying these guys should have youth work training, which is so right. Yeah. I don't think it's just about mm. police officers, though. Actually, youth work training is useful for most jobs that you do, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'd be really strong advocates. It, interesting, I was up in the northwest in Cumbria yesterday and we were having just this conversation saying, mm -hmm. actually, when lots of our organisations we work with are looking at how they can become sustainable, one of the things they're looking at is actually if their training offer that they offer to the youth work sector is transferable to other sectors. And it absolutely yeah. is. I think there's a real mm -hmm. gap, not just around police officers, around all sorts of other professions, of us using the skills that we use to train youth workers to, to transfer that across to other sectors. So, yes. Yes, absolutely. I don't think it's just I don't think it's just about the empathy they'd have with young people. I think it's about the way they'd approach their whole their whole job um, as well as as well as the young people they work with. Oh, I, got a question. I, agree. I got a question. I got a question. I got a question. I'm going to put my hand <laughs> down. Now, I guess. Yeah, anyway, but I think <laughs> I think what, while you were speaking, everything that was coming back to my mind was the conversation that we all all three of us had, which was about the value that youth workers have, you know, across other sectors. Um, you know, and, and, and they can use their skills to train customer service. You know, they know about customer service, how to build rapport with people, yeah. delegation, working within teams. You know, the, the skills and the, the, the abilities that youth workers have, you know, are, are, are magnificent. What it leads me to is what your views yeah. are on kind of um, the qualification side and stuff. And, you know, there's talk about the, the Institute of Youth Work and there's been criticism <laughs> around that and there's been, Ooh. you know, <laughs> Yeah, there's been there's been criticism and then there's been people that are, you know, advocates for it. So, you know, we haven't shied away from any massive topics. So what are your views around yeah. the Institute of Youth? Work? No, no. I think with all of it, yeah, I'm quite torn in that there are loads of people who volunteer in youth clubs who get trained up or whatever, who are really brilliant youth workers. And I don't think you have to have a qualification necessarily to be able to do that. I'm also wary at the Institute of Youth Work thing. I'm just wary about us constantly creating these kind of new central national things when actually yeah. surely that's kind of a role that some of the organisations that exist already should be playing. Yep. I just I just don't know if we need to create another thing. Do you know what I mean? You know, when you just have that thing of thinking we already, I think, have a really complex, crowded infrastructure kind of centre, you know, and, and, and we're part of that mess i think um that i think needs to be brought together and to look at how we work together anyway i think actually a lot of the principles behind the institute of youth work surely should just happen and sit within one of those organizations that that you know sits at the center of what we all do yeah 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 i think what what you what you've just said it kind of resonates with what adam nichols at changemaker said it needs to be a kind of bottom-up thing rather than a top-down kind of institute will tell you yeah. what to do um so absolutely i've got a lot of time for adam i couldn't agree more great because i think that the three more... of us are banned from any future <laughs> <laughs> the three of us are banned from any future meetings well no institute of youth work uh, you know I mean, if talking. there's any meetings we can we can yeah. we can day crash those meetings i think can't we i don't know, I don't know. no do you yeah, know what? Do you know? I, lot, I, can I... We've said, go on, we've just said right from the beginning. It's not that we're against some of the ideas within it. I just, I just hate this idea of yeah, the creation of institution after institution after institution. I just, you know, is that really I, what I, youth workers? 
I, I totally co-sign with you, and I think that we have enough organizations, and even within some of the organizations, it, it needs to be a bit more focused because um, creating something new just spreads it out thinner. And, you know, the one thing we want to do is not be diluted. We want to be concentrate. You like that? You want to be concentrated yeah, a, a, a bit more because I just think it rather than, yeah. So, I'm, you know, I understand the principles behind the Institute, but I, I just think it's, for me, I just think it's replication when, when there's so many things that already exist. So I'd agree. Next question, Bob. So the next question we had from um, social media was from Matt Lent. Hey. Um, what role, hey. and his question was, what role can growing social enterprise sector, the growing social enterprise sector, take to support the youth sector, yeah. youth engagement and employment? Mm. I I personally think this kind of division between the sectors is, is pretty blurred anyway now. I wouldn't necessarily say you've got a social enterprise sector, you've got a youth work sector, you've got a business sector, whatever. I think what we're seeing more and more with loads of different, you know, projects and things that are coming up, it's about people coming together and working together. And it doesn't necessarily say, I mean, it's about this sector and this sector and this sector. So we work with people in social enterprises all the time. And lots of what we do is social enterprise. It's just it happens, you know, it happens within a charity. I, I think it's a, it's a bit of a false label in a way. It's about people, depending on what their skill set is, what their resources are, what, you know, what they're able to offer, coming together, having conversations across sectors and saying, right, how can we all work together to do what's best for young people? I think there's a load of brilliant people doing stuff around social enterprise at the moment and it's really really exciting i was having a chat with ketan earlier around some of the stuff they're doing and young enterprise live and all sorts of stuff that's bringing all these sorts of people together i think it's just about everyone working together and not putting a label on it being this sector or this sector or this sector okay okay fantastic brilliant. answer um let's get that last question in from Jovan Sterling Noel. It's got a really badass name. I think I'm just going to shout that out straight. Jovan. Jovan yeah. Sterling Noel. <laughs> Jovan. Jovan. Actually, Jovan <laughs> in Punjabi. They have to I, bet, I Punjabi. bet his name is Jovan. Jovan is youth yeah. in Punjabi. Bet he doesn't know that. I'm going to shout is that it? out to him. Yeah, Jovan. Youth Jovan. Sterling Noel. Yeah. 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 And his questions are. Uh, his question better be good. <laughs> now, after that build-up. <laughs> after all of that. It says, what are her thoughts on schools and the methods to which children stroke youth learn? Oh, my God. So, How long have we got? So, this is yeah, such no, no, a no, massive no, question. No, 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 we should have started with that question. So let me let me kind of try to paraphrase that. We what, should. What, what, are the role, what, yeah. what are the roles that schools can play in, in the youth work sector? And how, how is that changing? What do people need to look out for now? I feel really passionately about this. We're involved in an organisation that brings organisations together called Whole Education. If, if no one's checked it mm. out, go and check out Whole Education. And it's all about saying... Of course, the school has got an absolutely pivotal role to play in young people's education. But education isn't just about sitting down and having your academic lessons or whatever. It's about thinking about what in the 21st century do young people need to know and learn in their whole education to go on and become happy and successful adults. And there are some schools out there who are doing such brilliant, innovative things around working with the youth sector already and other sectors bringing in people from outside with all sorts of different skills and expertise to offer all sorts of different opportunities to young people. And there's some great examples of that. This is a, a very topical debate we're having in my house at the moment because my husband's just retrained to become a teacher. And so he's just started today's kind of first job as a, as a teacher. And his real passion is about, and the reason he's kind of changed jobs is around instilling a love of learning into young people. And it's not about what, you know, a curriculum and it has to be this and it has to be that. It has to be around how do you figure out for that for each young person what it is they need to learn, what aptitudes they need to have, what skills they need to have, what confidence they need to have, how they interact with other people, how do they form relationships, and then on top of that, what information and, and, and knowledge do they need? And I think there's a massive role, you know, for us all to play. It's one of those things where you go back and you look, whether you believe in the public sector for schools or not, it's one of the things that, um, you know, fee paying schools do really well. They actually make sure they engage all sorts of different opportunities for young people plugged into that school environment so that young people can do all sorts of different things. And I think that's what whole education and lots of other people are trying to do is say, look, the school is the hub, but actually 
there's loads of different people who can plug into that hub to make sure young people have opportunities to to you know increase their skills and opportunities so i don't know i could, I could talk about this forever i i think we'd be absolutely crazy not to realize that the school is the obvious place to hook in around it you know to all these sorts of opportunities but we've all got different bits that we can plug in and as long as you've got innovative head head teachers who are who are up for trying things a bit differently i think there's lots of great stuff happening check out whole education if you haven't yes indeed indeed they have a, they have a conference later this year don't they they have a conference they do. we have been invited bob We've been invited to the conference. We'll have a conversation with that offline. Okay, just a very quick awesome. question, actually, because you made, you made me made me think about this. I am, although I understand what you said earlier, I am I am actually one for wanting there to be a bit more qualifications within youth work. And what I mean by that is that I, but I want it to be wider than safeguarding and you know yeah. how to run a youth, how to run yeah, a ping yeah, pong yeah. club or we, what have you. We talked about this. And, we talked about this. You know, I, I I just think that there is some you know, the I think in some ways that, and, and Bob harkened to this earlier, that in some ways youth workers have been kind of like devalued. They are this, you know, they're, they're not this, uh, this uh, you can go and get a degree in youth work, but it's still not something that's paid accordingly. And I'm thinking, you know, as an individual, as part of an educational hub that you say, if somebody comes to you and they want a bit of mentoring and a bit of coaching, a bit of guidance around learning, a bit of... Um, yeah. Ex, you know, a lot of kids don't get the right career stuff in school. It's still a continuing, ongoing process. I think the place where they go, where they get a lot of respect, a lot of listening, there should be some sense that your youth worker or your youth workers that are there can provide either touch points to go to or a listening ear. And I'm, re I don't know, I, this is my being my bonnet. I just think that the whole rope. Okay, I understand youth volunteers, and let's get it, put it in perspective. I know they're volunteers who are going to go into a club, set it up, just be around there to hang around and just to be like that family member. But I also believe as an instrumental part in youth development, youth workers outside of the school, because you've got youth workers in school as well, but outside of the school should be instrumental in knowing what the tools and strategies are to be able to really empower young people as to the choices that they can make, not just for learning in school, but for lifelong learning. That's my being yeah. my bonnet. Take yeah. It yeah, but, I agree. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna let's write a manifesto about it. Yeah, <laughs> we're supposed to be doing that now, not to be a lot. <laughs> but I think, I think what we, you know, I mean, Dave and I, with Dave and I joke, and you know, he, he bashes me up and I bash him up. But the first time, you know, I saw him in action in a school, I was like, wow, you know, I mean, I, uh, I, I wanna, I'm gonna big him up publicly. But you know, I was there and I was saying, you know, if we can't get experts like David McQueen into more schools then we're missing a point here. And that's not degrading yeah. the role of what the teachers do. In fact, the teachers are the ones that come up yeah. afterwards and say, you've enhanced what we do. Um, you know, he can go in there and he's dedicated his life to be able to build rapport very quickly with young people, be able to convey a message, be able to take stuff and experiences and go in there. Yeah, get paid for it. Yeah, get paid well for it. <laughs> but, you know, we need to have, you know, honesty, we need to have that debate about how are we going to, how are we going to nurture our children? I mean, I might not get you know, yeah, over romantic I, about it, but, but I completely we, agree. We need to have that. And I remember thinking back to when I was at school, there being some outside speakers and people who came in, and they've completely stayed with me now. They're some of the kind of bits of my education that I completely remember as being the most motivating, the most inspiring, the things that made me think, yeah, I could do that. And you're right, it's about bringing all sorts of different exposure. It's about exposure to all sorts of different opportunities and and things for young people and not just it being about a right this is how this is how school works yeah what it comes down to me is is the responsibility for that nurturing isn't down to the government isn't down to the youth service isn't down to uk youth you know isn't down to kind of a, a starbucks yeah you know it's down to all of us I and mean, we all need to play a role um and are continually talking to parents and saying you know you can't just delegate that to someone else and this is all about us contributing something. Yeah. And schools, I believe, and I know that Dave believes this too, are a central point because that's where the young people, a majority of the young people are. And those that are not in school still have some relationship to that school, uh, whether they're being excluded, whether they hate yeah. their school. But, you know, that should be the place where everyone feels a sense of contribution, that they could contribute something. And, and the reality of it is that people are waiting for the chance to contribute. You know, I don't think people are reluctant. Mm. The, 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 when I've worked in communities, you know, people are aching to contribute something because they know how centrally important it is. 
Um, so, but you know, we're all going to go on to yeah. our soapbox. I know that we might be short a bit of time. I'm constantly flicking my <laughs> eyes over to the time. So, Dave, you want to start? Yeah, over to the clock. <laughs> yeah, do you want to start rounding us up before yes. we get told? I'm going to. Um, uh, yes, indeed. I want my last, my last kind of question to you, Charlotte. Obviously, we're, yeah. um, we're, we're fanboys. I think we made that very obvious in the interview. We're not going to even hide that. Uh, but what does the future hold for the CEO, Charlotte Hill of UK Youth? UK Youth is. Um, it's such an exciting organisation to be part of. I love the fact that now I'm kind of 18 months into my job, which I can't believe has gone so quickly. So I've kind of done that period you do as a new chief executive of probably getting to understand your organisation and look at it. So we're now just in the process of actually just completely reviewing and redoing our strategy for the next three years of saying, right, we've got a great organisation here, but like you, we're really, um, we're really passionate about what we do and we want to make sure we're the best organisation we can be to support young people. So we're just, um, yeah, refreshing. We've just done a brilliant load of stakeholder engagement about trying to understand from people what we do well, what we don't do so well, where there's a need for us to focus. So we're just looking at kind of focusing our work on what's coming for the next three years. The thing, though, that we come back to time and time again and that people think we do really well, but I think we can do better is this youth led element. I think there's a big um, there's a big space within UK youth for us to do even more. We do a lot with UK Youth Voice and lots of young people shaping our projects and programmes and sitting on our board and and I think we're good, but I think we can be great at it. So um, I think there's there's some there's some more scope for us doing more there, and um, and loads of other stuff. I've got a big long list. I'm looking up at my to do list up there, and there's a lot there's a lot there's a lot coming, um, and hopefully doing more collaboration. I'm all for looking at ways we can work with other national organisations as well as all the local partners and people we work with and saying, right, let's bring it all together a bit. Let's make sure we do have that voice for youth work that's needed and that we're all speaking from, you know, one hymn sheet rather than hundreds. OK, over to you, Bob. I shall leave you to round out. I'm just overwhelmed now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what... <laughs> One of the questions I like to ask uh, as a final question is, is, is some people might be watching yeah. this and they might be concerned, they might be you know, in the process of losing their job or trying to look for another job, feeling a bit scared. You know, we've been quite enthusiastic about the opportunities, but at the same time, you know, we always base it in you know, hardcore reality that you know, people might be very uncertain at the time. Yeah. So is there a message, a message of hope that you can give to uh, someone watching this to say, you know, these are the opportunities. What, what would you like to say if someone's watching this now and they're saying, oh, this sounds really great. Everyone seems really positive. I feel quite concerned and uncertain. Yeah. What would be your message to them? Do you know what? I've, I completely agree that in different local, author local authorities or different areas or different organisations or whatever, people are in very different places at the moment. Um, and for some people, it is a real time of change and stress and flux and or uncertainty or whatever. All I can say is the role that we see ourselves playing is one being a real champion for why this work is important so that people hopefully will keep investing in it, whether they're the community, you know, the, the local council, whether they're business or whatever. But also that role of saying where we can, we want to play that role of being a broker, of bringing in as many funds and support and things as we can into a sector. There is going to be no magic wand to wave, though. Um, every single sector, ours you know, not even just the, the youth sector, not even just the voluntary sector. You ask across businesses, you ask mm -hmm. across everybody. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is a tough time to be doing lots of different jobs. So I don't think there's an easy answer. All I can say is we'll, we'll keep trying to do our bit to make sure where we can, money is invested in, you know, the very best people at a local level doing the best delivery to support young people that, that they can. Great. Okay. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure, Charlotte. Sure, sure. Absolute pleasure. We thank you for thank being here you. on... I love youth work. I'm sure we'll probably get like millions of hits now because Charlotte's been on here. Um, but it's a real pleasure. And we look, we look forward to part two. Yeah, we really sure. look Thank forward you. to part yeah, two yeah. And, and, and seeing how, and seeing how UK youth develops under your leadership over the, 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 the coming future. So thank and you. Can I just say appreciate. thank you too for what a brilliant thing I love youth work is. I, I do really love it. And I'm still waiting for the T-shirts and the hoodies to come out. Where are they? Come on. Uh, we're, we're, uh, Bob? Um, that's right, Bob. <laughs> they're, we're, they're, they're coming. They're coming. Trust me. Trust me. They're coming. All right. Thank Not you very much for inviting you. me All to right. join you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.